Jay, welcome back to Coast to Coast. Dane Wigington with us as we talk about geoengineering droughts. We were talking about droughts, Dane. Well, in that regard, George, and, and I, before I press on to fill in blank there, I just want to stress to your listeners, in addition to the film footage, photographs of nozzles, aircraft spraying at altitude, so forth, we have government documents on our site, too, some 800 pages long, Senate documents outlining the scope and scale of these programs, even as far back as 1978, that refer to the programs going back into the 40s. Uh, we have every form of data that a person could want to uh, validate this issue. On the droughts and a weapon of war, as this issue is, George, you know how many nations in the Middle East have been toppled since 9-11, yeah. correct? Yeah. Unbelievable. And isn't it interesting that we had Wesley Clark a week after 9-11, you know, General Wesley Clark stating on the record, all of the countries that were named as part of the list of countries that were going to be toppled, and can we entertain the notion that it's a coincidence that every single one of those countries, Libya, Afghanistan, Iraq, Syria, underwent once in 1,000 year droughts. Hmm. Now, that's what destabilized those countries. So how, how did that happen? Right? We have the leader of Iran stating that. So now I would argue, why would we think that those in power would look at the American population any differently ultimately than these these other countries and when we we take for example the nuclear test in nevada we now have very good study to prove the covert nuclear test in nevada were responsible for the death of nearly a half a million u.s citizens oh my gosh now again how many examples do we need to understand that those in power do not care not only about other military personnel, our soldiers, if you will, but... Were they just stupid, Dane, or do they just really don't care? Well, I would argue we're not dealing with sanity, and that's uh, from psychoanalysis of those in power. We're dealing with various forms of psychosis, and the common thread with those forms of psychosis is a near lack of comprehension as to the consequences of their actions, even to themselves. So they certainly don't care about others. And, and George, how many examples of this do we need to know that um, those pulling the strings ultimately responsible for carnage, wars, and, and contaminating um, you know, entire swaths of the planet certainly are not thinking rationally. So, because we hear that argument a lot, don't we, George? People who say, well, why would they do this to themselves? You've heard that, right? Exactly. But I would argue how many examples of them doing this to themselves do we need? From the nuclear example I just gave, the detonation of 2,000 nuclear bombs all over the globe, which contaminated every living thing on the planet. We have Fukushima, that may be a, an extinction event on its own if other factors don't do the job first, which I would argue will be the case. Uh, we have enough nuclear weaponry to mathematically extinguish the human race thousands of times over, and we're building more. We're not dealing with sanity, and the population needs to realize that. They need to face that fact. If you couple, Dane, with what I had with my first guest, where we were talking about basically uh, a group that is trying to take over everything, uh, it makes a lot of sense. Certainly there's no arguing that that's the agenda, but what I would argue is this, that agenda won't mean anything on a planet that's dead. And the planet indeed is dying by the day. And again, for those who don't believe that. But they're killing it. Yes, it, it's not just these programs, though. It's you know I think in order if we're going to have going to have any chance of getting academia to show some courage, which so far they have not, and acknowledge, for example, the climate engineering elephant in the sky, we need to acknowledge that all forms of human activity have done damage, and all of us need to recognize this. We need to at least acknowledge this. Now the the attempt to engineer the climate is certainly more complicated, and there's more than that going on. It's not just about engineering the climate. It's about ionizing the atmosphere for, for offensive and defensive weapons, EMP offense and defense. It's for over-the-horizon communications. There's many agendas being carried out in our skies. But this willful attempt to control the weather, and, and I've had people ask me that too, George. Why would they want to control the weather? Have you heard that before? Oh, constantly. Oh, oh, isn't the response, why wouldn't they? Why wouldn't they? You, can, you control the weather, you can control the planet. So we have President Johnson in 1962, before he was president, but he's at a graduation. And this is the beginning of my weekly broadcast. People can see President Johnson stating this. It's, it's at GOGWatch.org, Global News Weekly Broadcast. And George, you probably, you've seen that video of Johnson, right? Yeah. 
I sure have. So we have President Johnson behaving like a lunatic in 1962, emphatically stating that he who controls the weather controls the world. So for those that ask the question, why would they want to control the weather, why wouldn't they? Of course they would. It's the crown jewel of defense weapons when you can bring a country to its knees, as I just described, without that country ever, the population at least, ever even knowing they were at war. Do you remember when uh, the Olympics were held in China several years ago? Certainly. And everybody was saying, what are you going to do about the weather? And they said, don't worry about that. We can control that. Exactly. It's so amazing. How much proof do we need? And, you know, for people who think that official agencies, if this was going on, would acknowledge it or the media would acknowledge it, I couldn't be further from the truth. I mean, who, who's controlling the media? Don't we know by now? Five major corporations, all of them connected to the same core of power, those who print the money, the central bankers. And again, what I would argue, George, of all the challenges we face, and there are many, and they are valid in and of themselves, I ask the question again, how many of those issues that people are focused on will matter on a dead planet? And for those who think that that's still perhaps millennia out or centuries out or decades out, that's not the case, not mathematically. In the last 40 years, we've lost over 60% of Earth's wildlife populations. We at Geoengineering Watch.org, to my knowledge, were the first to publish the crashing insect populations at the levels we published, 80 to 90%. We did that about six years ago. That We, we had seen an 80 to 90% decline in aquatic and terrestrial insects in Northern California. Now we have peer-reviewed study from Germany and other places in the world confirming exactly what we initially posted and published. Now, I would ask this, how long do people think we're going to be around if we're already seeing 80 to 90 percent mm. decline in insect populations? Now, so why, um, let me use the analogy of the scorpion and the frog. You've probably heard about this, Dane, but the scorpion goes to the frog and says, hey, I need a ride across the lake. Can I jump on your back? And the frog said, no way, you'll sting me and kill me. And he said, now, why would I do that? Uh, I would drown myself. So the frog reasoned and said, okay, hop on. So as they go across the lake, the scorpion stings the frog. As the frog and the scorpion are going underwater to drown, the frog says, why'd you do that? The scorpion says, it's my nature. My question is, why would they kill the planet when they're on it? Well, again, you have to back up and understand that this is a consequence. We have a power structure, George. Can we argue the power structure is like a cancer at this point? Mm, I'll give in to you on that. Go ahead. Okay. If, if, in my opinion, it is. It's a cancer. Does the cancer intend to kill the host? No. The cancer intends to proliferate at any cost without regard for the consequences, and the host will always die. And we have how many people participating in that cancer just doing their job, just provides a paycheck and a pension. They don't ask questions they don't even want to know. But in playing that part for the power structure, they are a part of the cancer. And when there's nothing to restrict or regulate that cancer, what happens? And that's exactly where we're headed. I would argue it's not the intent of those in power to kill the planet. And we have people that are trying to go there, and that's... Well, but don't they look at it and say, oh, my God, what are we doing? Look, we're killing this. We're killing this. The trees are dying. Let, let me back up to what I said earlier then. This is psychoanalysis straight from the manual that these various forms of psychosis, which almost without exception, those at the top realms of power uh, are conditioned with, there is a near total lack of comprehension as to the consequences of their actions, even to themselves. We are not dealing with sanity. And the population needs to realize that. And for those in the population, George, that try to convince themselves that someone somewhere is watching out over things, doing, you know, keeping an eye on this, and it can't be that bad because someone would have sent up an alarm. That's not true. That's not true. We'll have, in fact, uh, I, we have a, a, an annual awareness event, free to the public. Reading, or, or Anderson, California, will announce this on GeoengineWatch.org, July 28th, free to the public. We have an EPA whistleblower there who's fired. He's dying of cancer now, but he was fired for trying to bring geoengineering to light, the contamination of geoengineering. So for those who think that, again, agencies are watching out over this, it couldn't be further from the truth. I, I spoke in front of the California Energy Commission in Sacramento, California, the capital, in 2009. The California state top scientists were there. I passed on data to them. And at that meeting, 
the, the commission voted for and purchased a $200,000 spectrometer from Scripps Institute in order to determine the chemical composition and origin of particulates of unknown origin that were costing the state rainfall. I just mentioned that this disrupted the rainfall patterns, right? Mm -hmm. That instrument has never been seen or heard from since. Hmm. Never. So, I mean, we know at the, at, at the top levels of government, this issue is systematically being hidden. This is the issue they will try to hide the most for the longest for many reasons. Another aspect of this to consider, anthropogenic activity, as I stated, the current paradigm of civilization that is sinking the planet in countless ways, those in power are not willing to let go of that power based on this system. They're not willing to let go, and they will try to keep business as usual as long as possible. Part of doing so is to mask the severity of biosphere collapse until the last possible moment. George, you saw in 2014 the, the media headlines of the snows in Boston, correct? Right. What, did you see this year the, all the headlines about the snows in Erie, Pennsylvania? Oh, my God, just as much. Okay. Very, very small patches of real estate. Very small. But all the headlines were there. And they don't talk about the fact that there's no snow in countless other places. That's right. They don't talk about Pinpoint. the fact that they the, uh, were record low for both poles for sea ice. And those who, again, cite other sources, it's, it's not the case. I encourage you to look at satellite imagery, and, the, and it's, it's absolutely correct that we're, the ice, not only is it uh, record low surface area, where the mass is at record low, and we're, we're likely to have a blue ocean event in the Arctic this year or next. But including those snowstorms, even if it's 100 degrees in winter in the U.S. Southwest, when people see headlines like Erie, Pennsylvania, a tiny little patch of real estate that has a record snow, they think, well, it must be okay. It must be okay. Even though, again, the whole eastern half of the U.S., as I stated in the beginning of this broadcast, being the only cool patch on the planet of uh, uh, far below normal temperatures, that's one two hundredth of the Earth's surface area mathematically. And you, and you can, I hope you can see by the, the statistics I give, George, I, I'm not shooting from the hip. So one two hundredth of the Earth's surface area, for all the people living in the eastern U.S. that had a cool April and are convinced it must be fine elsewhere, it's not the case. We had people dying in India. We, we had temperatures in the 120 range in India in March this year, 120 in March. Did we hear about that here? I don't think so. We didn't. We've had heat indexes, George. If your listeners don't know what a heat index is, that's the feels like temperature, which the Weather Channel talks a lot about feels like temperature when it comes to cold, but not when it comes to hot, because they want to mask the severity of what's unfolding. That's part of climate engineering. So we have heat indexes now occurring, George, in various places around the globe in the 165 degree range. Is it conceivable that these power brokers don't realize what they're doing in terms of destroying the planet? Well, again, we're, we're back to a form of psychosis that believes that they believe so strongly in their power or their ability to manipulate that there's a, the blind spot I described earlier. And that form of psychosis, again, doesn't see, recognize, or is not willing to accept the totality of consequence they are inflicting even on themselves. And we have examples of that. Again, I cited those examples. The nuclear detonations contaminated everyone on the planet, including those who were behind the nuclear detonations, who ultimately were responsible for them occurring. And, George, you, you've seen the videos of our soldiers out there with goggles on watching the blast mm -hmm. bomb, right? Mm-hmm. For those in the military who think that those at the top tiers of power care at all about them, that's simply not true. It's simply not true. What happens if they, and we've seen extreme weathers, we're seeing extreme winters, extreme summers, extreme heat, extreme droughts, extreme tornadoes, everything is extreme. Is that because of this? Yes, in the weather whiplash sense, yes. On the heat portion, no. The planet is warming. The planet is warming right now, George. At uh, on its own? Not on its own. You think we're it, doing it? There's no think about it. Mathematically, statistically. I mean, intentionally or because of just stupidity? 
it's it's human activity, whether we're talking about uh, industrial activity or geoengineering. All forms of human activity, let me try to simplify this, all forms of human activity that affect the energy balance of the planet are a problem. Statistically speaking, and this has been done by statisticians, your listeners can look this up, we have these articles posted at geoengineeringwatch.org, the mathematical odds of the current changes being natural is a statistical zero. The current changes are happening 170 times faster than any previous era in Earth's history. Nothing natural about this, George. People die, correct? They die. It's natural, right? What happens when you throw somebody off a building or throw them in front of a truck? Unless they have wings, they're history. Can we say that it was natural? It's natural. People die. But when you, when you do something that's not natural, when you affect the energy balance of the planet, so let me answer your earlier question as to the weather whiplash. We have the planet right now. Thermal energy buildup on the planet is happening. Your listeners can look up everything I'm stating. Don't believe anything I'm saying. Look it up. It's warming at the rate of four to five Hiroshima bombs per second. The thermal energy in four to five Hiroshima bombs per second. That's 400,000 per day. That heat's been going into the oceans. The oceans are superheating and they're dying. They're stratifying. So we have the cool downs you mentioned, the extreme cold. That is a direct result of climate engineering. So that's, that's where the heart of the weather whiplash scenarios are. And those are very limited regions compared to the regions that are superheating. And we see, George, when we check temperatures, and we do check, we see a very substantial under-reporting of the high temperatures. Stay with us, Dane. Hold on. We're coming up to the top of the hour. We'll be back with more, and we open up the phone lines next. Find out more about...